Welcome to Health Tech Hustle. We exist to share stories of the brave entrepreneurs helping to solve the most important problems in digital health today. We interview top leaders in health tech and bring them onto our show each week to listen and learn from their story. With your host, Rodney Hu, founder of 209 Digital. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Health Tech Hustle. Today, I'm joined by a very special guest, Mr. Kyle Puckhaber. Kyle has over eight years of experience in product management, working in various capacities in health tech companies. He's worked as a product manager for health tech in the long-term care industry and is now working in the fitness industry with his brothers, helping people achieve and maintain their fitness goals. And so I'm excited to have him on as a guest to pick his brain and just learn more about him and his story. So with that being said, Kyle, welcome to the podcast. Hey, thanks for having me, Rodney. No problem. So yeah, let's just jump right into it. Why don't you give people a background of just who you are and how you got into health tech and what you're currently doing in the industry? Sure. Uh, yeah, I got into health tech uh, purely by accident. I, you know, when I graduated college, I moved down to Honduras for a year. I mean, my my now wife, then girlfriend, we decided that we wanted to, you know, go travel before we started our real lives. And then we moved back up to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. She went to grad school. I found a job at Northwestern Mutual as a life insurance rep. And uh, so I did that for about six months and, and got burnt out of that. And I found a job at a small health tech firm called Dart Chart Systems. And uh, I was hired on as account manager, moved to product manager, and then to software development manager. So as an account manager, I would travel to the different new facilities we would get. So basically, uh, long-term care facilities, your old folks' homes were our clients, and everyone in the facility needed to you know, learn how to use our software. So I taught people how to do that. So I taught them the CNAs, the nurses, the MDS coordinators, the DONs, everyone that had a different piece of the puzzle in the software. So I spent a week and I would go there and I would uh, talk to people, show them how to use the software. And I got really into the product. I got like really into, you know, learning about how people were using it, finding out what were the challenges in the industry, what they were really doing and, and how, you know, some of the governmental regulations uh, affected how their payment structures were. That's essentially what we did is our software helped them basically get the most from Medicare reimbursement. And we asked the questions in such a way to make sure that we were documenting all of the care that was provided so that they could get reimbursed for those the care that they did. So I, I really dug into the product and I started to ask questions like, why are we doing things this way? Maybe there's an opportunity to do something different here. And there was a new position that opened up and a product manager position because of my curiosity and the way that I was interacting with the product and coming up with new suggestions and things like that. It was kind of a natural fit for me to move into that role. And uh, I absolutely love that role. And I consider myself a a product manager at heart uh, still today, even though I'm working on a number of different projects. It's all about what kind of value can I bring to the consumer? So yeah, essentially, my one of my big projects there was uh, basically helping out states uh, get make sure that when patients in long term care facilities were what we call duly eligible, so they're both eligible for Medicare and Medicaid, that if they were eligible for Medicare, then Medicare should be the ones that are reimbursing the skilled nursing facility. So Medicaid is a payer of last resort, and it's also run by the states. So states were incentivized to make sure that people were on Medicare if they still had eligibility for Medicare. So that was that project was my baby, and uh, I really enjoyed working on that in you know, figuring out, all right, what are the prompts? What are the, the quickest survey questions that people can come through and ask here and answer here you know, to, to make sure that there are no more eligible conditions that would keep a person on Medicare. And so kind of going through that process was uh, it was a lot of fun because you got to see things go from the drawing board all the way out to production. And it was me that was monitoring all of the processes in between. So, you know, we did, you know, weekend sessions with uh, nursing consultants that we flew in and uh, we, you know, kind of whiteboarded the whole process out 
And then I worked with some uh, business analysts on writing those requirements, getting it over to the developers, developing it, testing it, and then putting a plan together so that all of these states could use the process, making sure we let you know each of the administrators at the new nursing homes what the process was going to be and, and all that. So all of that was part of what I did. And, and so that was where I really learned a ton, you know, really digging into government regulations, really digging into some of the challenges in the industry and really solving a lot of those problems for, you know, skilled nursing facilities, state governments. It was a win-win-win for everyone because Medicare pays more than Medicaid. So the facilities, if they were properly billing Medicare, they would get paid more. In return, they could give their patients the care that they needed. They could use those extra dollars to do that. And then the state also won because it was able to cost shift some of those dollars over to Medicare, which was run by the feds. And so, you know, the Medicaid budgets was were getting better as well. So those are the types of opportunities that I really like to look for. And those are the things that I really enjoy working on. So... That's a, that's a bit about me. It's kind of a mouthful. So. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. That was very interesting. So to me, like you didn't have a lot of background in healthcare or understand like the business aspects of healthcare. You started with tech, but you were able to learn more about the industry through teaching your customers how to use the product that you guys have created, right? And through being able to teach them how to use your product, you're understanding more of their pains and their the product pain points and areas that you can help and provide value, correct? Yep, absolutely. Yeah, that was something that I found, you know, early on. And and then I went and I, you know, I would I would present to, you know, a room full of administrators, DONs, like people that had high level degrees. I think there's a lot of PhDs in the rooms and stuff. And and afterwards they would come back and be like, what was your background? I'm like, actually, I, you know, I had a, I had a philosophy major and uh, they're like, well, you're really talking like you're a nurse and you really know this stuff. So I'm like, well, thank you. I've been working at it for a while. So yeah, I think, you know, just getting there and learning on the job is, is the way to go and just really digging into being a curious person. All right. So being curious and then just immersing yourself within that culture or that community, it really accelerated your learning curve to be able to provide value for this space. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. So since you were able to pretty much take a deep dive into the healthcare industry and the health tech industry, and you were able to learn a lot, what is like one of the major challenges or problems that you see in the industry right now? Well, I guess what's most topical and what's on everyone's mind right now, and this is uh, March 23rd when we're recording this, not exactly sure when it'll be going out and things might be different then, but it's the COVID-19 that's got everyone, you know, everyone's concerned right now, right? Like a lot of states, they're locked down. We were just talking before we started, you know, California's locked down right now. I'm in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and a lot of the, I mean, the restaurants are all closed, you know, like a, a lot of stuff is going on. And one of the big concerns is that we don't have enough equipment for the frontline workers. They don't have, you know, the respirators and these are the people that are saving our lives and making sure that we can live what our existence right now. And it's really important that they're being taken care of and that they have the resources that they need. And so I think one of the big challenges is mobilizing the healthcare industry in order to be able to treat all the people. So that, that one's you know, most topical right now, but I can go into some other areas if you want to. Okay. Like you meant just like making patient care more digitally available to people? I guess that's one way to do it. I think I've heard, you know, that they're coming out hopefully soon with some home testing kits. So like if you need to, you know, rather than getting the emergency rooms lines out the door, I've seen pictures of people just lines out the door of people trying to get tested and stuff. And, you know, four hour lines and these drive through lines where people are driving through to get tested. If there's a way to get some of these testing kits and that's another problem right is like there's not we don't have a ton of kits so like mm-hmm. so unless you have a real reason to get tested like some people are saying are not having people get tested and so i think yeah if there's home testing kits and you can just order one digitally or you can you know do some telemedicine with a, a doctor on the on the screen and they can check your your vitals through yeah some digital technology, I think, yeah, that's going to really help a lot. And, 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 you know, then people aren't getting 
it kind of lessens the amount of people that would get infected, right? So mm -hmm. I, yeah, totally. Awesome. So just pretty much improving communication and delivery of certain resources. So yeah, I know that you have a background in tech, but I also know that you're working in the health and fitness industry. So I kind of want to just give you an opportunity to talk about how you are combining fitness and tech and what you're doing in that space. Sure. Yeah. And it's especially important right now because of COVID-19, the gyms, um, you know, our governor said that if there's any uh, gatherings of 10 or greater, stop doing that. So, so, you know, we shut down the gym. So now we're doing all of our personal training, all of our group sessions online. So we're doing it through Zoom and we're finding ways to make it a fun, interactive way for people to work out from their own homes. And, you know, a lot of it is, is keeping people keeping people happy and making sure that they're still like, even though, you know, we're going through this really tough time right now that people are staying engaged and they're staying on top of their fitness goals. I kind of want to read. So we got like, we use a lot of like Facebook groups and stuff like that. So we created a members only Facebook group where we're posting some of these videos and stuff like that. And I just want to read like one of the things that really warmed my heart when I read it that one of our members wrote and it was just i thought it was great you know he said hello all i i'm not one for long-winded messages so i'll try to keep this short mm -hmm. in these uncertain times i find it is vital to count our blessings and express gratitude where it is deserved over the course of the last few days the only posts that made me smile and kept me sane and grateful are when I see our selfless leaders at I2 Fitness, Alex and Mark Puckhopper. Those are my brothers. Those are the guys that own the gym. These guys are busting their asses and reaching out to us in these crazy times to make sure that we aren't losing sight of our fitness goals and keeping up the levels of accountability. This, my friends, is a genuine passion at its highest level. These guys have never wanted a pat on the back. They simply have a vision for what an integrated fitness community looks like. They want us to succeed and lead our best lives. I'm so fortunate to have known Alex Pukhaber for three years, and we're all fortunate to have them contributing to this lovely community we love so dearly. So I'm taking a moment to give thanks, and I hope you will join me in thanking them for giving so selflessly. People around town say our club is pricey. To that, I say it is worth every penny, and I wouldn't have it any other way. We get results. And so I just, I saw that and I was just like, wow, that's amazing. That's awesome. Nice. So essentially you run a gym where people come together and work on their fitness goals, but with the whole coronavirus thing, you're encouraging more of a workout from home type of deal, but still creating that accountability and that motivation inside your fitness community. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things that we've done is uh, allowed them to come check out equipment. So like if you don't got dumbbells or, or ropes or, you know, whatever, like they can come into the gym and, and check out some equipment. So that's been a nice thing for folks to have as well. So yeah, I, I think that's, that's a big thing. And then I guess the other thing is like, you know, just leveraging social media a lot, you know, because we use a lot of Facebook ads to get people in the door. And then also, like we, like I said, we had these Facebook groups and we get people to share their why on, you know, our Facebook groups so that everyone can, see, it gives them more buy-in when they are sharing why they want to do this, right? So then there's other people on the group that are like, yeah, I've been there and you're going to do great. And so there's a lot of encouragement, and a lot of like really positive use of social media. And I think that, you know, I think Facebook can be a tool for good or evil, right? And uh, I think that by doing it this way, really building that community, we're able to help people really achieve and maintain their fitness goals. Like people at the gym, most people like lose 20 pounds. That's normal. You go to these other gyms and you just kind of see people just kind of going around from machine to machine. And our gym is a transformation gym. People are transforming their bodies, they're changing their lives. And that's normal. And everyone's changing their habits and they're becoming good friends and you know, going away from some of their old habits and creating new great ones so it's it's been a wonderful time to do that and uh, leveraging a lot of these online technologies like zoom like facebook click funnels is one that we use we use zapier to zap 
the different things. We have a, um, we've been using some, experimenting with some automated lead nurture stuff so that we have a, a robot that talks to new people coming in and scheduling appointments and stuff like that. And so there's a lot of ways that we can focus on helping people transform their bodies and automating some of the, the other things. And so we've been leveraging a lot of those tools. Awesome. So like what I really like with your situation is that usually with a gym and anything fitness related, people have to go in and work out, but you created this workout from home environment to encourage that, that physical change, but also like your, you add on that whole mental and the aspirational identity that they can see themselves transforming into. And so I, I was listening to the quote that you're reading and the guy mentioned how some people may talk about the price of your services, but to him it's worth it. And so by creating this community where it's not like they're just losing weight physically, but they're getting that there's other intangibles that are affecting their livelihood. And that Necess- and that pretty much negates all price resistance from them because it's worth it to them. And that's sure. it. I would also add that with, you know, having a high price, and this is kind of counterintuitive, but when you have a higher price, people value the thing more. So if you say, hey, this is, it's an expensive product, but because of it, it's expensive. You're going to show up. You're going to do the exercises. You're going to do the nutrition. You're going to, you know, talk to your accountability coach. You're going to do all of these different things. And that's another thing I forgot to mention is we got accountability coaches that uh, we, we also have an app that the accountability coach can put in a custom plan for the person. And then the person can complete that plan and then touch base with the accountability coach 24 seven. If they have any questions or if they're having any struggles, they can talk to that coach. The coach reaches out to them and says like, Hey, you know, the weekend's coming up. What's your plan for your nutrition? How are you going to, you know, make sure to, that you're going to stay healthy over the weekend and stuff like that. And so it really, it's an extra little prompt that helps people stay accountable. Cause that's one of the, the big things with going with a new weight loss plan or something like that. I mean, I, I know in my life I've tried a number of times, I'm like, okay, I'm going to work out and I, and I get into it for like three weeks and then I fall off. And well, that's, what's nice about having an accountability coach. They're like, all right, three weeks in, like we still, we're still going to keep maintain this. We're going to keep doing this. And uh, so that's, that's one of the things that really helps. But yeah, I think the price thing is really interesting because the higher something costs, the more value you perceive it having. And so you're going to use it more and you're going to use it like it is a valuable thing and it is a valuable thing. So that's, that's a really interesting thing. And I encourage folks that are starting out in, you know, if you're doing a, a new product or something, there's a, there's a big push for people to oh try this product for free. And I would encourage people not to do that because if you're giving away a product for free, people aren't going to use it like it's an expensive product. So I encourage folks to charge charge for your product, even your beta users, and uh, you know make sure that they're getting value out of it. And one way to do that is is reflected in the price that you charge for something. Nice. So you have your like core service that you're offering, but then you're also adding these additional things like the community, the accountability coaches to add value to that core service to make to increase the perceived value of your product, right? Absolutely, um, yeah. So what other offers are you offering to them to get the most value out of your services? Like any challenges or boot camps that you guys offer to kind of get everyone together? Oh yeah, for sure. We we offer a number of different challenges. Uh, sometimes we'll offer challenges like externally to folks that uh, we you know want to get into the gym, and so a lot of times we'll do like a six week challenge or something like that, and you know that get people motivated to come into the gym and discover us. And a lot of times, like if they follow that six week challenge to a T, they're going to lose twenty pounds or five pounds or five percent body fat, and a lot of people do it. It's not easy to do, but like if they stick to the plan they will see results. And so that's really cool. And then we also do internal challenges. Like we just did one that was a, a belly flat fat blaster. So it was a couple extra workouts, a certain nutrition program and some supplements that help them to get, get rid of some of that belly fat that's hard to get rid of and, uh, you know, get some abs, you know, so. Awesome. So I know like the, in general, the fitness community is pretty large and there's like a ton of people that could benefit off of working out, but is there a specific customer, your ideal customer, your target audience that you guys go after, whether it's athletes or middle-aged moms? So like, can you talk about who your target audience is and how you're going about connecting with them? Sure. So yeah, it's uh, people that have struggled to lose weight and 
they, you know, they've tried a number of things before. We're a transformation gym. So if people have tried something before and it hasn't worked out, like those are the people that we're targeting. So a, a lot of times it is those middle-aged moms, but not always. So it's a lot of different folks, but that's the biggest thing that we found that we are able to provide the most value is for those folks that really want to make a change, a lasting change, and they've tried before and stuff didn't work. And, you know, and now they're really ready to get moving with that. So the way that we find these people is we do a lot of targeted Facebook ads. So it's a lot of writing a copy around just that very thing. Like, you know, you, you tried to lose weight before and, you know, it didn't work and, and, you know, and so on and so forth. And you basically, we get people to sign up for one of the free challenges that we're offering. And, uh, yeah. And then we, we get them into the gym and, and, um, uh, get to know them a little bit more and what their goals are and discover what their why is and uh, get them rocking and rolling so that they can get that body they've always desired. Nice. So when you're running these Facebook ads and you're like targeting specific communities, what sort of content are you using? Are you using like videos? Are you using like pictures before and afters? Or just like what sort of content are you putting out there? Yeah, good, great question. So yeah, that's that. That's a big thing is like, you want to get something that's a pattern interrupt, right? So it's like, people are scrolling Facebook or Instagram or whatever. And they see something and they're like, what is going on here? Right? So like, we just did one. So my brothers are the twin brothers, right? And uh, oh, nice. they, so they look, they look alike. And they, they're jack, you know, they're pretty strong dudes, right? And so we did a thing recently where one of them jumped on the other one's back and they're doing rows. They're doing rows together on each other's backs. And they're, they're, you know, they got the barbell. So he's got a barbell on top of the other brother. I can, I can, I can send you a link to that if you want to put it in the show notes, but uh, yeah. it's really, it's really funny to watch. So stuff like that, that's really going to catch your eye and be like, what is going on here? And then, and then you have the copy, like usually long form copy that really digs into kind of hits some of the pain points that we know that people are thinking about and gets them to you know click on that link to sign up for a consultation essentially oh, okay so then you get them to the consultation they hop on a call then you just learn more about them the goal of getting them to sign up and yep. join the community absolutely that's it gotcha so you pretty much started this fitness company or you started a gym but can you talk more about the tech that goes into your business as well and how you're using technology to pretty much add more value to your business and also help grow. I know, I know you mentioned you had an app as well. Yeah. So I guess I could start with the app. I just, <laughs> it's funny. Cause I was, I was trying to explain to somebody all the technology that we use. I'm just like, it's just, it's, it's crazy. There's so much technology, but a lot <laughs> of it is, is, I mean, it's super worthwhile to, to have all this stuff. Right. So yeah, one is uh, our app. So that's the app that basically, our clients are able to log in and see if there's any messages from their trainer and see what their, you know, there's a calendar for each day, like what the plan is for each day, if they have a personalized plan for that. There, you can send videos. We send a lot of video messages. We find that people react more with video messages than, you know, just text. And so we're able to, we also have like, so part of that app then is we have just a library of about a thousand different exercises and it's you know my my brothers uh and some of the other trainers too that are showing people how to do the exercises so so that's really valuable so that the app is one another is we use grasshopper so that we can that's basically our office phone so we have a phone that is an app on my phone my brother's phone you, you know you can get on your desktop and so we use that to make calls and texts to folks and so that Everyone can see the texts come in and respond to them as soon as possible. And then we also use Haymarket for doing some of the, the marketing pieces of it. So we can send SMS text campaigns to folks. If there's a new challenge or something like that internally with people in the gym, we'll send it through there. And you can kind of make a campaign. So it'll send, it'll continue to send messages until the campaign's over. And once someone responds to it, then they, you know, they're out of the campaign. And then we use, yeah, the Facebook ads, and then we use like ClickFunnels for our landing page. And then we use Zapier to whatever there's like a person that goes through the ClickFunnel and they, you know, they sign up for the consultation, then Zapier connects that to a Google Sheet and the Google Sheet connects to 
grasshopper and then we get a text that says hey someone signed up and we can give them a call right away and if you give them a call right away it would be like hey it looks like you just signed up and and they're like yeah i'm looking at the page right now and you know urgency is critical so the faster you respond like that's when people are already thinking about it so they're in that mindset of like oh yeah i need to i need to do this and so when you can contact them as they're looking at the page they're more ready to buy and then you get them in that afternoon or the next day and uh they're they're in that that buying mode and ready to make that decision, that's going to change their life. So those are some of the things that, that we use. Nice. So I like how you're mentioning all your pretty much your tech stack and how you're able to stay top of mind with your your with the prospects essentially and then reducing the decision making fatigue and getting them in right away when you know that they're already interested. Yeah, absolutely. That's really important. Speeds speeds king in this game. Nice. So it sounds like you have a nice system a nice flow of your customer journey and you know where they're at and how to target them and how to communicate with them effectively and pretty much share your message but can you kind of speak on like some problems and obstacles that you're facing in your journey to grow in your business and grow in your customer base Sure. Yeah. I think uh, the, the big one right now, I guess, top of mind again is COVID-19. It's like, all right, now how do we get new people into the gym when no one can go to any gym, right? So that's something that we are actively looking at. It's like, okay, how can we get completely 100% remote people to come in? And uh, so that's something that we're we're figuring out right now, right? So we're just... Um, Right now, I mean, the big thing is we're just providing as much value as we can to the current members so that members aren't leaving and they, you know, they continue to be a part of the gym, even though it's a remote gym for now, right? So then it's like, okay, now they're taken care of. Now, how do we take that to the next level? And we've done a number of uh, different remote challenges and stuff like that. So we're taking some of those the results that people have gotten from the remote challenges and then using those as ads and, and things like that. And so that's what we're you know, kind of the next, the next step now is like, rather than, cause it's a lot easier to um, sell people when, when they're in the gym, right? Like they're mm-hmm. there face to face, like you can see the reactions of people and stuff like that. It's a little bit harder to do it remotely. So it's kind of a, just a shift in the way that the way we're, I mean, we're still providing the same value, the same services. It's just a shift in how we deliver it. Right. So figuring out how to do the marketing and the sales and the fulfillment on that end. And then, um, yeah, so that's, that's the biggest thing. And then and another big thing is just like, uh, as we grow and grow and grow, it's keeping track of all of the clients and, you know, doing some retention stuff and making sure that everyone's happy and no one's falling through the cracks and giving that, you know, that personalized touch to each person that, that comes in and making sure that they're on top of things and they're, they're reaching their goals. Uh, is a big thing. So doing all the different reach outs and stuff like that, you know, we make sure that we run reports. And if someone hasn't been in the gym for a week, they get a, they get an email, they get a phone call, they get a funny text message, you know, get them back into the gym, right? Like we don't want people falling off. Just constantly engaging with them. Absolutely. Awesome. And so the fitness project, is this your main thing right now? Main priority? Yeah, this is uh, yeah the main thing that I'm working on right now. I also just launched another uh, um, my own page, which is basically helping people. It's called Magic Kyle. So I got a Facebook page. I got a half built website right now, and uh, basically it's teaching people how to be who they truly are. And it's it's you know a journey that I've been on myself, and I wanted to share that journey with folks. And a lot of it's around meditation you know, meditation is a huge tool that's really helped me along along my path. And it can be really magical once you start becoming aware of what's happening and proactively creating your journey rather than just kind of reacting to what hits you. So that's something I'm developing right now. I don't have all of the the kinks worked out or whatever. Maybe by the time this gets released, I'll be be further along. But that's my other project that I'm working on. And right now I'm just like developing content and stuff for it. And I think what I'd like to do is create some kind of um, classes and some courses around that, around becoming who you truly are, because that's what we're here to, to do. And uh, I want to help others become that. So Awesome. So just creating content around your story and sharing your story and around how you can create your own life rather than living the life somebody else has told you to 
Live. Exactly. That's exactly it. That should be my tagline. I should steal that. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it, man. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, you're working on your fitness stuff. You're working on your own stuff on the side. And I know that just running a company, running a business in general is hard to do, especially for one person. So can you kind of speak on your team? I know you mentioned your brothers, your twin brothers a couple of times in this episode. So can you speak on like the team that you have and how they're able to work with you and how you guys are able to work together to grow your company? Sure. Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, the, the gym, so Mark and Alex, uh, those are my brothers. They, they're the, they're the owners and kind of wear all of the hats right now. And so they're, you know, they've been trying to do a lot of the offloading onto some, some other folks. And so they just got like a office manager and I was doing like, so basically I came on, I, and I came on because uh, I just uh, shut down a, a startup that I had. So I had a startup, we were a cybersecurity startup and we were in business for like two years. We went through a couple of accelerator programs. We got some funding and we just got to a point, like, I think if we like would have stuck with it for like five years, we maybe would have, you know, got something off the ground, but it was just so hard to sell cybersecurity products to folks being a brand new cybersecurity company. None of us had like any kind of uh, expertise in it. We just like learning really fast and, Mm -hmm. you know, trying to provide value for folks. And um, so anyways, I I left that at the same time, my brother's gym was just blowing up. And and so I told him about some of the stuff that I did. So I I came in and helped them out with some of the stuff on the operation side, helped them clean up their books a little bit, helped them, you know, kind of just made sure that, you know, the train stayed on the tracks. I wanted to keep the tracks there so that when they're moving super fast, the train doesn't derail, right? So mm-hmm. I've kind of helped them out with that for a bit and realized that a lot of the stuff that I was doing, like responding to messages and scheduling appointments and all this kind of stuff, I'm like, you need someone that's... And I live in Milwaukee. They, they're in the Madison area. So I was commuting there like once a week I would go. But like they, I was like, you really need someone that's here that's doing this stuff and helping you out. So they got, they got a couple people helping them out with that right now. They have, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five trainers that are doing, they do a variety of, they do large group and small group sessions and stuff like that. So that's, that's basically the team. So there's, it's Mark and Alex and then the five trainers and a lot of like what they're focusing most of their energy on is like the sales and marketing stuff. And, and so what I'm doing for them now is helping them, you know, kind of launch that online business. And so figuring out how do we tweak the messaging in order to get someone to to sign up online right so mm-hmm. so that's something that i'm i'm helping them out with right now awesome so i mean you kind of just alluded to it right now in answering my previous question but i kind of wanted to talk about like if you're looking at your overall business strategy from a high level overview what would be like the main pillars that you're focusing on i know you mentioned marketing and sales and then you also mentioned your team how you have the personal trainers helping your brothers as well, freeing up some of their time. But what are like the most important pillars that you are focusing on to build this foundation? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of it is finding people, finding the people that need help and then getting them into your space and then helping them out, right? So it's, that's basically it. It's like providing value, pro- proving you provide value and then continue to provide value to new people, finding those new people, bringing them in, provide value again. So it's kind of a, a big cycle, right? Awesome. So providing value, that's really what it is. And so... That's exactly what it is, man. And so I want to ask like, because I'm a big believer that people do business with people, not not businesses. And so running a business in the health and wellness industry what sort of mindset do people need to have in order to have success other than just the business aspect of things? They have to really believe that they can do it. They have to really, that's, I think that's the biggest thing is belief. You know, like when you can break someone's belief, they can do anything. When you can break those beliefs that are holding you back, that's when magic really happens. And so I think that's the biggest thing is like, having that foundational belief system that's like, I can do this, I can make change, that's when it actually happens. That's when you really manifest what you really want. Awesome. And so we're coming up towards the end of this podcast and we've been diving in and learning a lot about your background and a lot about what you're doing in the business sense. And I want to kind of end it with a more relaxed little exercise I call the rapid fire round. So I'm going to ask you a couple questions and 
You just give me the first answer that comes to your mind. Cool. Sounds good. All right. So first question. What's your favorite book of all time? This is a tough one. I think I'm going to give you two answers. Is that okay? Okay. <laughs> The first one, the one that probably changed my life the most is uh, Tim Ferriss's Four Hour Work Week. I think I read that and it was just like it, it blew my mind. It got me to think about things a lot differently and really set me on a path to be more of an entrepreneur than working for someone else. And then, so I think that was the most influential one on me. And, and I think too, you know, it's tough to, and I, I think I read it at a time in my life that I needed to. So it's kind of hard to, you know, suggest things for folks because uh, people are at different stages in their lives. But when I read it, it just like, it was really groundbreaking for me. And then the second one, I just, I just finished listening to Conversations with God and that one blew my mind. It was, you know, it's a three-part series that I just listened to the audio book. It's like 30 hours of audio content. And the whole thing is just gold. It's this guy that basically he was frustrated with life and he started to write a, a letter and just kind of like, why is all this happening to me? Blah, 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 this and that. And then he was about to put the pen down and all of a sudden it started writing and he's like, do you really want to know the answers? And he's like, well, yeah. And so he started these conversations with God that lasted over a year and he just started asking all of the questions that were on his mind about the nature of the universe and all this stuff. And, you know, it goes into all, all sorts of stuff. And, and, uh, the, the big theme of it, and, and this is what kind of got me to start the Magic Kyle, is that life is about becoming who you are. And that's the gift that, that God has given us, you know, essentially. And I was just like, wow, this is, this is powerful stuff. So anyways, that's, that's my most recent one. So those are my two favorite books, I guess. <laughs> awesome. So you kind of alluded to my second question in explaining the first one, but who would you say is one of the most influential people in your life or who's had a big influence in your life? Yeah, I would say Tim Ferriss. Like he's, do you listen to his stuff? Um, yeah, I've, I've watched like a book summary of the four hour work week. <laughs> That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. Really good stuff. And this podcast is probably one of the best podcasts I've listened to his guests that are on the way he asks questions and like, you know, he's really powerful stuff. So I, I think that he's definitely had a big impact on my life. Awesome. What is one goal you want to accomplish this year? I want to launch my online business, my, uh, my magic Kyle. So that's, uh, that's my big goal. Awesome. And then what is one piece of advice you would give to your 20 year old self? I think of myself at 20 years old, I was drinking and partying a lot. And I guess that's what you do when you're 20. So, um, I enjoyed it. You know, I enjoyed myself and I enjoyed my friends and what I was doing and stuff like that. But I think if I was going to give some advice, I think I would tell myself to calm down, search inward, and find peace. Awesome. Thanks for those answers. Well, Kyle, I really want to thank you for jumping on this podcast. I learned a lot about your journey and your story from being a product manager to helping your brothers run a gym and just learning about how you were able to learn about a market that you didn't have experience in. And then also the what you're doing in the health and wellness industry as well, and how you're able to provide value and connect with your community. And also just how you're able to grow a business and what you're doing in the right mindset that you have to have and the right people that you have to surround yourself with. So definitely want to thank you for jumping on. Cool, man. And thanks for having me, man. Thanks for reaching out. And uh, I wish you the, the best of luck on this podcast. And uh, yeah, cheers, man. No problem. Is there anything you want to share? Where could people find you? Any websites? Sure. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Puckmine. That's at P-U-C-K-M-I-N-E. You can find me on my LinkedIn. It's uh, Kyle Puckhopper on LinkedIn. And you can find me at Facebook.com slash Magic Kyle P is the new page that I just launched. And then also I2 Fitness, find us on the social media, I2 Fitness Coaching. And yeah, Instagram, I2 Fitness Coaching. Yeah. So yeah, find us, find us everywhere on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks for hopping on, Kyle. All right, cool. Thanks, Rodney. Thanks for listening to today's episode of Health Tech Hustle with Rodney Hu, founder of 209 Digital. Tune in next week for another interview with an expert leader in digital health.